Hi everyone, welcome back to our course on the biblical doctrines of our faith. And we're going to go on to the next subject. We want to talk about the doctrine of sanctification in this segment. Last time we were talking about salvation and looked at different aspects of what that salvation, how it's described. And I mean, it's such a powerful thing to understand how the Lord has brought us into His family and regenerated us and adopted us and justified us, you know, and changed our legal position before Him. And and now what we want to do is we want to look at, in this particular segment called the, called sanctification, and this is basically the process that God brings us through for the rest of our lives. We have that moment where we are justified before God. We are saved. You know, we talked about salvation in the last few segments. And so when we understand salvation, what we're looking at is in general, regardless of how we kind of look at it, we're talking about our legal position before God being changed in an instant, right? So our legal position automatically changed. We go from darkness to light. We go from death to life. And that legal position before God has changed. It's changed once and for all, eternally. And so we begin to walk that out. So the walking out process, called sanctification, then is talking about not our legal position, though we have a new legal position before God. It's talking about our living condition, the way we live our lives. And so sanctification is simply walking out and developing and maturing in the life that God has given us through that new legal position, that new legal standing that we have before Him. I like, I like looking at it in that way. You know, salvation talks about our legal position before God is now justified, clean, we stand before Him. Our living condition is now the sanctification process of walking out what we have been given given by God. So let's let's look at it. I want to draw your attention to one verse. I mean, there are so many different verses that we could consider here, but this is the one that was resting on my heart. If you if you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, we're going to take the very first verse. It's a real Paul in the rest of the chapter, chapter 2 and on calls the Corinthian church to repent, but he's still speaking about holiness here. Chapter 7, verse 1 is still actually, if you look at it, still a part of chapter 6, starting at verse 11 and working through the whole call to to holiness. And so, you know what, let's do something different. Let's back up to chapter 6, verse 17. Let's start there. So chapter 6, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, 18, chapter 7, verse 1. They're all one piece, and so, yeah, we'll do it that way. Chapter 6. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Therefore, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, and the Spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So what is what is that telling us? First, we hear the invitation and the call, right? My friends, every one of us need to hear that call, chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. We need to hear that call in our spirit. We heard the call to salvation, but He's calling us here. He's not just He's not just giving us an invitation, though some take it as such. Invitations can be accepted, not accepted. Is it convenient today? Maybe not, maybe not. No, this is a call. This is, this is the call. We need to hear it as a call to abandon our former life, to let go of the old life, and to start anew with this new life we've been given in God it's as if we completely forget that previous life and we just go, okay, God, lead me, Father. Show me how to develop this new life that you've given me. I don't even know what it is. You know, it's like I got to discover it. Part of it is, is so much through teaching because we don't know this new life we've been given. We have to discover it. We have to be taught. We have to be changed. We have to face the new values and, and seek to change them. And so... This whole thing that Paul is doing right now is he's showing us. You and I have been called out by God, all right? So these verses actually describe for us very, very well 
what the sanctification process is and what sanctification is. It, we're going to look at what it is and then its process, right? So two, two aspects. In these three verses, Paul gives us the call to understand what it is, so he defines it, and then he shows us the process for actually seeking to cooperate and walk it out. So first and foremost, we see in verse in chapter 6, verse 17, come out and be separate. In other words, separate yourself, right? Separate yourself from the former life. So we've got an entire Bible full of stories, historical narrative, where men and women heard the call of God to separate themselves from their former way of life and enter into a covenant with God. We have so many stories about this. You know, right from the very beginning, Adam and Eve were called out to walk with God. They failed, and so he established a relationship with them that they could still walk in that way of being called out, but now the transformation process was going to begin. They were called out of their sin. He gave them fresh clothes and covered them, and now he began to walk walk in a new relationship with them. Noah was called out to be separate. Build for me an ark, but I'm separating you from the, the people in which you're, the culture in which you're in. I'm separating you from that culture. Build for me an ark, and then when I come to judge the earth, get into the ark, and I will save, I will save your family. The whole process. You know, Abraham, come out from your father. Take a covenant with me, right? So the very first man that was considered to be in a covenant with God that brought forth the Jewish line actually started in Ur of the Chaldeans. If we were to give it a modern day geography, Abraham began, Abram began as an Iraqi. He was from the nation of Iraq, that political state called Iraq right now. That was the land in which he lived. God called him out and separated him from his father's house and Abram took a covenant with God and that covenant separated him from his former way of life. His children developed this whole huge nation called Israel. They were separated from Egypt. They were called out of Egypt. And so sanctification, the first call that Paul is showing us here, is calling us out of our life of sin. We're hearing the call to exit our life of sin, to completely reject it, and to leave it behind. In other words, it's a part of where we get the word repentance. We turn our back and we walk in an opposite direction. We go away from what we once were. The second thing that is promised is don't touch an unclean thing. So that's a part of the call. He says, I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters. And so this is the other part of sanctification. It's not just we have been cut away from and set apart from and called out of our sin. We've been called out for a purpose to be set apart and sanctified and to be called unto a relationship with God. So we are called out of our relationship with sin into a relationship with God. We have been sanctified from, so we've been called out from, and we've been called unto. So that's really critical that we understand. When we use the example of the children of Israel in Egypt, God told Moses, go to Pharaoh, and tell him, let my people go, come out of, right? And bring them before my mountain, I want to speak to my people. So they were called out of Egypt to be brought before God at a mountain where they would, where they would take a covenant, right? And so as we think of sanctification, we talk about the separation of our lives from sin and the constant ongoing process of coming out of the world as God works with us. So he starts with giving us a free, fresh, new legal position before him, but still for the rest of our lives, he expects us to cooperate with the process in our living condition by constantly coming out of, out of darkness, leaving the habits of sin, the habits of that old life. It's experiential for us. We experience it. We have a moment where we're born again and we're separated from and brought unto, right? We talked about that with adoption, regeneration, right? We're called out of that old life and now we're brought before the Father. We cry out, Abba, Father, we belong to Him. And now we learn, we begin to learn the values of our house. We're going to be conformed into the image of Christ. It tells us that in Romans 8. And we're going to put on the new life that God has given us 
and we're going to put off the old life. So Paul gives us this metaphor in the sanctification process of like changing our clothes, taking off the dirty clothes, being washed, and putting on clean clothes. He gives us this example, and he goes through the different, he names them, you know, what is a part of the old life, malice, anger, lusts, right? And he begins to talk about what's a part of our new life, love, grace, peace, kindness, right? So that we're, it's like we're changing our clothes, this outward way, this behavior that is noticed by people that demonstrates that something has changed for us on the inside. I want us to understand now how we look at this process. So in verse, in, we're back in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. This is where Paul now talks about the process. So in chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, he's talking about being called out of and being separated unto. And now in verse 1 of chapter 7, he talks about how does this process work. He said, having these promises, so in light of these promises that God will be our Father and that He will cut off our old lives. Uh, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and of the flesh and of the Spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. So what is this process? How do we cooperate with the cleansing process, the sanctification process? There's a couple of other scriptures I want us to, to look at. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Paul starts to give us an understanding of how this process works. So I just want to break it down very, very simply. He says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other words, the sanctification process is constantly from glory into glory, from step to step, trying to bring us into a greater liberty and freedom in our spirit before God. It's not trying to create this greater liberty or freedom that I get to go and do what I want to do. So many are defining it that way. It's not true. This liberty that Paul is talking about is a greater freedom from the old of the past, those broken dead areas of the past, and a greater liberty in the spirit to walk out our relationship with God in a spirit of freedom. And then he says, watch what he says, but we all with unveiled faces, in other words, God has no longer hiding himself from us. He is open and showing us, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What he's really telling us there is that the secret to transformation is when we gaze upon and we look at the Lord Jesus as our example and in prayer as we focus and in worship and in our life with God, in our obedience and our cooperation, God begins to bring transformation as we look at the person of Christ. Paul tells us in Romans 12, to not be conformed any longer to the pattern of that world that we were brought into, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, we need to change our mind and allow this process to take place. Three different ways I see this process working. They're kind of like, if you want to say stages, we can call them stages. Stage number one, as we're reading the Word, as we're looking in the Word, as we're hearing a worship song, as someone is sharing a scripture or a testimony, in some particular way, we hear, again, the call to separate ourselves. And we go, oh, I want that in my life. Somebody talks about a verse. I want that in my life. I don't know how to bless my enemies. I don't know how to pray for them when they misuse me. I just get defensive all the time. I get mad and I, I want to punch them back. I just, but I want that. I want to have a spirit of peace about my life where I don't get defensive, right? And so it begins with what I call the awareness stage. We become aware of something that God wants to change in our life. And we hear it, not just as a desire, we hear it as God calling to us, I want to give this to you. I want to help you with this. You're, you're a little bit defensive, and so I want to help you. I'm making you aware that you're defensive. And I actually want to help you change that. You don't have to feel like you've got to fight everybody and defend yourself all the time. I want to give you actually a spirit of peace and security in your life that you don't feel like you've got to fight all the time. So stage number one, he makes us aware of something that he wants to help us with and to work into our lives. Stage number two, I call it the precursor to breakthrough, or I call it the warfare stage, where our flesh battles with it. We, we go, okay, and in the awareness stage, we become aware, and we generally re-agree. We go, okay, Lord, I'm down for it. Let's go for it. 
But now, step two, we're in the we're in the warfare stage where actually real life experiences touch us, and now we want to get defensive, right? Can I just be honest, friends? Most of us think that transformation happens by I just stand at the altar in a moment of prayer and God changes me. I just want you to know most of the time, that isn't how it works. Most of the time we agree to change and in that agreement there's an exchange of grace and He gives us grace. We become aware and we agree and we receive the grace to stand under the pressures now that come to try and get us to act out of what we were doing before. And so it's that warfare stage. It's that three steps forward, five steps back. I stand for it and then I fail. It's that cause of, Lord, I did it again. And then, and that, but Lord, you know my heart. And it's that warfare stage, right? Where there's pressure, difficulty. He gives grace. He's with us. But oh my gosh, there's this pressure and there, there's this difficulty. So stage one, we become aware and we agree to the process. Stage two, warfare, right? Pressure, difficulty, challenge. Stage three, breakthrough victory, where, where something happens, and by God's grace, we catch ourselves. This time we go, but Lord, I'm not going to do that. And we, we actually stand with peace in our hearts, and a, a new level of grace breaks through in our hearts, and we actually have a spiritual breakthrough, and there's a greater measure of grace that is measured to our hearts, and suddenly now we have a new measure of grace that we're living in. We don't we don't feel as defensive as, as we were before, you know, until the next time there's warfare and the next time the heat gets turned up because he, he changes us from glory into glory. That's how the process works. And my friends, when you and I say, when you and I agree to that, we need to understand how much he loves us that we would be willing to do that. That's the thing that most people don't connect to is as they're going through this process of transformation, they see this mean old father in heaven who's so disappointed in their behavior when actually what we should be seeing is a father smiling and enjoying us because we are seeking to walk in a life separated unto him. And so we have these different stages, it seems, where we become aware and we agree to the transformation process. Then comes the warfare until eventually we break through to a new measure of grace and that process works in our lives from the moment we are born again until the moment we die. That's life. That's how life is. That's the promise that he makes to us is as he calls us out, he will be with us as a father and give us grace to walk out this life where we're growing, changing, facing challenges, and breaking through in new levels of victory to walk in a sanctified life and this is how we change and the father looks down on us and he says I love you for that I love you for that he gives us grace this is the sanctification process we've been called out we've been called unto and there's a process now for the rest of our lives where we grow and mature in this life that God has given us the Lord bless you grace grace see you next time bye bye